Have we found another civilization? Is that a door to someone's home on another planet? Can we peek through the windows? After all, it was NASA's Curiosity rover that sent this image to Earth. And right now, this rover is exploring the surface of Mars. Unfortunately, astronomers were fast to disappoint us. They claimed that it was just a natural part of the Martian landscape. There are several clues that made them think it wasn't a real door. For example, it's tiny, a mere 3 feet high. But it might simply mean the Martians aren't that tall, you may object. But scientists keep insisting that what looks like a door is actually an opening in a rock created by natural forces, like winds and erosion. The thing is, if you look at the rock attentively, you may notice strata, the layers of silt that stand out because they're harder than the surrounding material. These strata dip here on the left and a bit higher on the right. They likely appeared around 4 billion years ago in a river or a windblown dune. Since the strata became visible, powerful Martian winds have eroded them even more. And now you can see that they disappear inside the door. And look at this! See those cracks? Yeah, those! That's how rocks weather on the red planet. This small cave probably formed when several fractures crossed the strata. A pretty large boulder might have fallen out under its own weight, and this created the door-shaped opening. Now this theory is quite plausible. Because even though the gravity on Mars isn't as strong as on Earth, it's still strong enough to do it. Besides, see that rock to the right of the opening? It has a suspiciously smooth vertical edge. It must be the culprit. It probably fell out not so long ago, and Martian winds haven't got rid of it yet. And winds on Mars can be exceptionally powerful. This planet is infamous for its intense dust storms. Sometimes they kick up so much dust that you can see it through a telescope on Earth. Such storms occur every year and cover continent-sized areas. They also last for weeks at a time. But besides these annual storms, there are even larger storms that happen much more rarely. But they're more powerful and way more intense. Those are called global dust storms because they encircle the entire planet. But even if you got caught in the most severe storm on Mars, it wouldn't be as terrible as you might think. The wind speed on the worst Martian storms reaches 60 miles an hour tops. Hurricane force winds on our planet can be twice that speed. You should also keep in mind that the atmosphere on the red planet is 1% as dense as the atmosphere on Earth. That's why, if you decided to fly a kite on Mars, you'd need the wind to be much faster than on Earth. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be able to get the kite in the air. In other words, even though it's quite windy on Mars, it doesn't feel as intense as on our home planet. Oh, by the way, you might have noticed I keep calling Mars the red planet. Why? Look, our neighbor is covered in dust, soil, and rock that is rich in iron oxide. That's what gives the surface of the planet its trademark red hue. And look, there's the trademark! Nah, just kidding. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. Not so far away from the star, you might say. And still, it's a cold and deserted world. The average temperature on its surface is minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you ever visit one of its poles during the wintertime, bring a lot of warm clothing. Because the temperatures are likely to drop to minus 220 degrees there. In the summer, though, you might feel very comfortable in some regions. There, the temperatures can rise to 70 degrees, not very different from what we're used to. Mars is one of the most explored space bodies in the solar system. At the moment, NASA has two rovers roaming the red landscapes, Curiosity and Perseverance. There's also one lander called InSight and Helicopter Ingenuity, nicknamed Ginny. Perseverance is the most advanced and largest rover ever sent to another world. The journey to the red planet took 203 days, and Ginny traveled to Mars attached to the belly of Perseverance. Sounds cozy. And now, I'm going to tell you something really curious. Let's say you're a Babylonian who lived around 5,000 years ago. Babylonia was an empire in ancient Mesopotamia. Just think back to 6th grade. Anyway, your neighbor comes up to you and says, what day is it today? And what do you answer? It's Mars Day! Wait, what? When the ancient Babylonians created the week, they decided to divide it into seven parts. Each day got named after some space body, like the Moon, the Sun, Venus, and so on. Mars Day was on Tuesday. The Babylonians believed that each of these space objects influenced their lives on the day named after it. 
And since Mars was red in color, they associated it with aggression. That's why on Tuesdays, they had special ceremonies to avoid the influence of the unfriendly planet. Indeed, Mars might seem unfriendly to a tired traveler. Its atmosphere is very thin. Its volume is a near 1% of the atmosphere on Earth. In other words, there's 99% less air to breathe on the red planet. Mars's atmosphere is mostly made up of carbon dioxide. At such high concentrations, it's toxic for us humans. And if you were looking for some oxygen to breathe on Mars, you'd come away empty-handed. There's only one-tenth of one percent of oxygen in the air on the red planet. That's definitely not enough for you to survive there. At the moment, Mars has two moons, Deimos and Phobos. Astronomers think they may be asteroids once caught in the gravitational field of the planet. The moons are shaped like potatoes. That's because their mass is too little for gravity to give them a spherical form. Potatoes, eh? Maybe they should be renamed mashed and au gratin. One day, Mars will get a ring of its own. It might happen in the next 20 to 40 million years. Will Brightside be there? Stay tuned. Mars' gravitational forces will tear apart the planet's largest moon, Phobos. Hey, it really will get mashed. Some chunks of the former moon will crash into Mars, and others will break apart and create the ring around the planet. This ring might exist for at least 100 million years. The surface of Mars is cut by a huge canyon system known as Vals Marineris. Mm, sounds like a pasta sauce. If it were on Earth, it'd stretch all the way from New York to California, over 3,000 miles. At its widest part, the largest canyon on Mars is 200 miles, and it reaches 4 miles at its deepest point. If you still have difficulties imagining the sheer size of this natural phenomenon, here you go. Vals Marineris is 10 times the size of the Grand Canyon on Earth. Now, since we're on the subject of gigantic things, let's talk about Olympus Mons. This is the largest volcano in the solar system, and it's on Mars too. It's three times as tall as Mount Everest on our planet, and that's the tallest mountain above sea level. And the base of Olympus Mons is as large as the state of New Mexico. Now, scientists think there could have been water on Mars in the past. What made them think so? They found lots of ancient river valley networks and lake beds on the surface of the red planet. Plus, on Mars, there are minerals and rocks that could only form in liquid water. Mars might even have experienced terrible floods 3.5 billion years ago. These days, there's still some water on the red planet, but Mars's atmosphere is too thin for this water to stay in its liquid form on the surface. Now, it only exists in the form of water ice. You can find it just under the surface of the planet in its polar regions. The only place where this water is visible is at the North Polar Ice Cap. Also, sometimes, salty water flows down crater walls and hillsides. And there are tiny quantities of water in the planet's atmosphere. But it only exists as vapor. So, as a vacation spot, I think I'll pass. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.